Hello and welcome to the CAS Literature Robert Frost and Seamus Heaney Anthology um, and this is Robert Frost's Mowing. Um, so you can see that there is a copy of the poem here um, and there's even a little picture of somebody doing very basic analysis on it. Um, so if you want to read through the poem and some of the tasks that you could do to prepare yourself for this. Maybe analysing it in class or for homework would be to try and pinpoint the rhyme scheme, the narrative point of view, the tense that it's written in. Um, maybe comment on stanzas or lack of stanzas. Comment on rhythm. Um, and then also maybe some of the basic imagery that you can see present in the poem as well. Um, now, let's begin our analysis. So, the summary. Um, as the har hard-working narrator works in the field on a hot day, he notices that his scythe seems to be whispering as it works. The narrator is unable to hear what the scythe is saying, and he admits the possibility that the whispering sound is simply his imagination, um, or even the result of possibly the heat. Um, so he's possibly got heat stroke. He eventually concludes that the scythe is expressing its own beliefs about the world. Instead of dreaming about inactivity or reward for its labour as a person would, the scythe takes its sole pleasure from its hard work. It receives satisfaction from the fact um, that its earnest labour is in the field, uh, not from transient dreams or irrational hopes. As the poem ends, the narrator ceases his own unimportant musings and follows the scythe's example, seizing the pleasure of hard work and making hay. So you can kind of see this almost affinity with nature um, and mankind coming into play, which is present in quite a lot of Frost's work. Basic contextual information. Uh, the poem was written in 1913, so it's one of his earlier poems. He had many experiences with rural life on his farm, hence the nature of the poem. He was influenced by the harsh realities of rural life that he himself experienced in farming. He moved to England in 1912, presumably where he picked up many of his English idioms that can be found in this poem and many more like it. Based on his own experiences of writing poetry, Frost was also criticised for drawing his poetry from everyday farm life. in New England, which many looked down upon as they thought it was not fit for the high art of poetry. In this poem, Frost points out that the truth as fact and reality are a lot more significant than imagination over imaginative fancies of gold and elves. He bases his poetry on real people and their struggles, saying that this is much more effective than any traditional sonnet based on fantastical content, which is a really interesting link to Seamus Heaney because, as we know, um, he really was like a poet of the people and he gets that name for being really relatable. Um, so you can kind of see similar parallels here. So connotations of the title. The title is simplistic and evokes the difficulty of rural work or tasks, emphasising the labour of the task. Structure, form, rhythm and rhyme. The poet is, or the poem is an amalgamation of Petrarchan and Shakespearean rhyme scheme, but doesn't strictly follow the form of either. Doing this symbolises Frost's choice to focus on reality, rural lies and struggles, abandoning the strict form and content ascribing significance to the everyday realities that he and others faced in rural New England. So this rejection of the traditional form emphasises the fact that he knows he is different from other poets, that he does not follow um, similar content and that that's okay that in fact that's actually part of his expression and what makes him him and what makes him unique it's got an ABC, ABD, ECD, GEH, GH rhyme scheme the poem's one stanza structure consists of an octet followed by a sestet um, the first eight lines introduce the sound of the scythe and the last six lines present an alternative interpretation celebrating the fact um, celebrating fact and nothing more. And there is a volta or a turning point in line nine. Now, traditionally, um, sonnets are about love. I suppose you could say that Frost here is emphasising his love of nature, his love of rural work, and his refusal to break with what he sees as a perfectly valid form of expression um, and a perfectly valid content for a poem. 
Um, each line comprises of five stressed syllables separated by varying numbers of unstressed syllables and only line 12 can reasonably read as strictly iambic, which is the closest pattern to human speech. Um, again, the break from iambic could also be his refusal to follow the strict rules of poetry, therefore refusing to follow the rules that people try to impose upon him as to what art and literature should be about. Narrative point of view, um, you've got a first person narrative point of view, emphasising the personal and reflective nature of the poem. The speaker who is mowing in a field on a hot day muses about the song that his scythe makes as it works. The speaker considers the whispering noise may be related to his imagination or even heat stroke. He rejects that the scythe speaks of something dreamlike or supernatural, concluding that the reality of the work itself is rewarding enough and the speaker need not call on fanciful intervention. It's written in past tense, emphasising his contented musing on rural work. Um, tone, atmosphere and pace. The tone is pleasing, it's conversational, um, it reflects the everyday aspect of his work. The poem progresses or moves into a contemplative tone as he muses about the abstract or imaginary significance of the scythe sound. It could also be considered curious and contemplative as he considers his rural work. Pace. Um, hopefully you can see that the enjambment slows the pace of the poem down and the alliteration in the third line quickens the pace, which hopefully you can kind of see here. I've tried to illustrate this here. Um, the atmosphere. Peaceful, serene, um, as reflected through the use of Frost's use of the sound of sense, which we know he loves doing. Um, it's quite a tranquil atmosphere depicted. Symbolism. As a statement about art in general and poetry in particular, the poem tells us that the real, the common voice, the realities of work and labour, these are sweet. Poetry inheres these things and need not be conjured through willful imagining, flights of fancy, such as the elves he references, or an abandonment of the everyday. In fact, anything more than the truth is debilitating to art. As a statement about living, the poem seems to say that working in the world, embracing and engaging its facts through action, is a prerequisite for knowledge about it. Truth comes before understanding, and truth must be worked for. And so the challenge for the liver of life, and for the poem, and for the reader of poetry, is to work to embody that physical, factual, sensory truth. But the poem also raises questions about the very act of culling, a poem for meaning. In our labour of reading poetry, should we only read for facts and not venture to interpret or project, because the fact is the sweetest dream that labour knows? Or should we nonetheless try our hand at analysing and extracting meaning where meaning is not clearly stated? Um, which is quite an interesting concept, of course, for all of you studying poetry, probably wondering sometimes why your English teacher reads so much into a poem um, and sometimes struggling to understand and thinking to yourself, no, there's definitely no way that the poet really meant that. You're reading far too much into it. Um, so symbol analysis. So the scythe is a simple form tool, form tool, but it is full of symbolism. The tool itself is pretty wicked looking, even if it is fairly primitive. It's a stick with a long, extremely sharp curved blade. It has connotations with death when you think about the Grim Reaper. Um, and it's likely that Frost was intending this to play into the poem on some level. When the scythe whispers, perhaps it is death whispering to the narrator to remind him that his time on earth is limited and that he shouldn't waste his time on trivial, unrewarding matters. Themes. So what does the poem say or suggest about these themes? Rural life seems to say that rural work is hard, especially with the oppressive heat of the sun, but labour is rewarding. The creative process, like the mowing, is an arduous task that takes time and nature. Nature is peaceful, inspiring contentment through its idyllic rural set. Language, poetic devices and imagery. So I've tried to kind of colour code this here. Um, and you can kind of see where I've, I've given up and not bothered to colour code anymore. So apologies about that. Um, so you can hopefully see that in this poem, the poet utilises his typical sound of sense, which he is famous for. He uses sophorific sounds and syllables in order to construct the oral feeling of the subject of the poem and the sound of the scythe. So sophorific is when it creates kind of almost sleepy, um, kind of lullaby type rhythm. 
and you can see that that's created through the sibilance, which in this case isn't harsh. Um, so both assonance and sibilance create a soporific effect that suggests the narrator is content with the rural setting and enjoying the peaceful serenity. The choice of diction whispering and the swaying meter create the effect of the side moving back and forwards through the field. Um, the possessive pronoun my emphasises the personal musings of the speaker and reminds us that this is a self-reflective narrative poem. It is doubtful that Frost is being completely literal in this poem as it is unusual, especially in a relatively wild section of grass, for there to be no sounds. And this could mean that the narrator is so deep in concentration that he doesn't hear anything else except for the sound of the scythe. The scythe is personified, and this changes it from a mere farmyard tool to a companion for the speaker, perhaps reflecting the isolation and loneliness of rural life. A scythe is commonly attached to the Grim Reaper, perhaps signifying death, and him being unable to hear the whisper could be um, death whispering. However, he is unable to hear it, showing that no matter how hard we try, we will not be able to grasp our death when we will die. Um, what is awaiting? And sorry about the typos there. Alternatively, the personification could emphasise the importance of the scythe as it attempts to share with him something profound. Um, so then if we look at this next section, we've got the rhetorical question, what was it it whispered, showing the narrator's desire to find answers. The narrator admits a lack of knowledge about what his scythe was saying, emphasising his curious and contemplative tone. You can see the symmetrical nature of the lines. Perhaps it was something about the heat of the sun, something perhaps, the kind of inverted diction there, um, or inverted syntax. Uh, so the swaying motion of the meter provides a sense of the scythe moving back and forward. Um, Sejura, with did not speak, ruminating contemplative tone emphasised through the audible pause. Um, there's the alliteration, what was it whispered? Soft sounds illustrating the stillness of the surrounding area and the strokes of the scythe. The repeated S and W sounds articulating the sound of the grass being sheared. Soft swishing movements or motions. The vagueness of perhaps and something is quite interesting and the repetition creates a swaying motion, briefly considering that the personified scythe is expressing something profound and fantastical before abandoning this idea. There is oppressive imagery with the heat of the sun, revealing the intensity of the rural work or labour, and the heat of the sun may be the cause of this. Then you've got the lack of sound, and this illustrates his attempt to comprehend the importance of the side's meaning through the silence. Then we've got was why it whispered and did not speak. So you've got more alliteration, and it is basically exactly the same point as the first time. Um, which you can see in the kind of turquoisey colour. Um, oh, sorry, we missed the sejura, um after about the lack of sound, and that was why it whispered and did not speak. So the sejura is the realisation about the importance of what the scythe represents. The slow pace represents the speaker's realisation. And then, sorry, bottom line. Um, sense of mystery achieved through the word choice and personification and there's a peacefulness or calmness through the silence seems to derive pleasure from the rural task. Then if we look at this section we can see that the reference to Fay is an old spelling of fairy. The scythe is speaking to him what he is working towards will be that much sweeter more fulfilling due to the effort that he is putting in something to be enjoyed and appreciated in the everyday aspect of life in rural New England. He doesn't need to draw upon the fanciful or the imaginative for this. He doesn't look for easy solutions to material problems. Then we've got easy gold at the hand of fair or elf. So the scythe doesn't dream about inactivity or reward for labour. Labour is its own reward, as depicted, sorry, typo, through the metaphor and supernatural imagery. Um, if we look at this section then, we can see that anything more than truth would have seemed too weak. 
Um, we can see that he is content with the truth or the fact of his current situation when we look at the adjective choice earnest. This shows that um, to convey more than truth would be to dream. So Frost only seeks happiness in his current simple reality. Then we've got the alliterative love that laid the soil in rose. Um, the alliteration emphasises the passion that the speaker feels for his labour. Then we've got pointed spikes of flowers. There's imagery of harshness, hinting at the harshness of his work, cutting down the flowers and intimidating the wildlife. Um, Swale in New England is a low-lying tract of land. You can see the enjambment here reflects his eagerness to work and hopefully gain a sense of enlightenment from it. It's interesting that the snakes and the flowers are the only living things in this poem which make them stand out. The flowers are feminine and delicate and representative of the female anatomy, whereas the snakes are masculine and reminiscent of the delicate. Um, they show up right after the poet speaks about love. He makes the point to say that the flowers are feeble and the snake is scared, um, showing that love is often hard work and those who rule in the hay will be scared by it. This emphasises the difficulty of rural life, but the pleasure derived from it through beautiful natural imagery. Um, so you've got your peel, orchises, and scared, a bright green snake. Um, so orchises are terrestrial orchids. Um, if you look at the brackets, you can see the parenthesis emphasises the beautiful idyllic nature um, or idyllic natural environment that he is working in. So it's praising that beautiful kind of pastoral scene. Um, then if you look at the scared and snake, you've got sibilance emphasising the sleepy, sophoric, sophoric nature, creating a trance-like daydream quality to the speaker's musings. Then you've got pale, bright green and long scythe. The adjectives or descriptive imagery emphasise the pleasure or joy that he derives from his rural task. You've got sweetest so the use of superlative and personification of labour emphasises the pleasure and significance found in rural labour. One does not need to abandon the everyday aspects of life for such things and it can be existent in reality. An escape into fantasy is not necessary. You've got possessive pronoun and repetition emphasising his continuation with labour and he's feeling content. And in the last line, the scythe is no longer an it, it gets back its name. Um, it's almost as if the narrator is waking up from his daydream and remembering that he has serious work to do. It leaves the hair to make, um, which is also reminding the speaker that there is more work to be done. No fantasy of whispering form tools is going to make that reality disappear. So hopefully this has been helpful. Um, apologies for all I sound, I've kind of got like a bit of a sore throat um, and you can probably hear it in my voice, but hopefully you understood all of that okay and it is helpful when you're analysing and preparing for your AS input.